this video I'll be working through question 2 of the 2019 level 3 mechanics exam question 2 three children are playing on a merry-go-round with rotational inertia of 271 kg squared once the children get the merry-go-round spinning they stand evenly spaced around the outer edge each mass has, each child has a mass of 28 kilograms and the merry-go-round has a mass uh, has a radius of 2.1 meters um, right assume the rotational inertia of the child's mass on the edge of the disc is given by that formula i equals mr squared which yeah it's kind of correct because they are basically point sources show the rotational inertia of the system is 641 so the nice thing about rotational inertia um, is it is, is a commutative they just add together um, so i total is equal to the rotational inertia of the child plus um, the rotational inertia of the merry go round i'm just going to merry um, and that is equal to there's three kids so it's three times the mass because um, they're all identical masses. Hey, what are the chances? <laughs> um, and the radius, because they're all the same distance. So it's three kids, so three times the mass, mr squared, um, plus 271. And if we substitute in the numbers, that is equal to 3 times 28, so 28 kilos times, was it, 2.1 squared plus 271. Um, and if you chuck that in your calculator, you should get 600, oops, 641.44 kilograms meters squared because the units are, the formula is ma uh, mass times radius squared, or mass times essentially distance squared. Um, so it's 644 kilogram meters squared. Um, and then we're just going to write down the bottom I total is equal to 641 kg meters squared because we have around 3 SF and I do like how the marking schedules now give everything 3 SF hats off to the exam writers also this is a brilliant exam whoever wrote this top top marks right the total energy of the system is 388 joules show that the angular velocity of the system is there and 1.1 uh, radians and the linear velocity of the children is through 2.31 right so the easiest thing to do is on your formula sheet your formula is velocity equals r uh, times omega um, essentially just radius times angular velocity. Uh, we're going to cheat and just go uh, 2.1 because that is the radius times angular velocity which says 1.1 um, and that equals 2.31 meters per second. Hey look at that we got the achieve point possibly I haven't actually checked exactly what it gives um, and now the energy EK rotational is equal to half the uh, angular rotational inertia, I should say, times the angular velocity squared. Um, and now we need to rearrange for the angular velocity. So essentially we're going to go two times, I'm going to get rid of the, like the, let's call it EK because I can't be bothered having the large thing. Um, I'm just going to go two times both sides, so I get two times EK. It's really EK rotational, but whatever. Um, and then I divide both sides by the rotational inertia and I get left with omega squared. Um, but what I want to do is I want to square root both sides um, and that leaves me with just the angular velocity um, and that equals square root 2 times 388 over 641 totally equals 1.0 uh, 1.1 rads per second negative 1 that's the units for angular velocity um, right one child drags her foot on the ground to bring the mirror around to a stop in 2.8 seconds. Calculate the amount of torque produced by the, for, uh, by the foot. Um, so in your formula sheet, you've got torque is equal to the rotational inertia times the angular, uh, angular acceleration. Um, and our angular acceleration is equal to the change in angular velocity over change in time. And that is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by change in time. Um, and that is equal to zero minus, um, it started off, or the, the angular velocity is 1.1, it's over the page, it's 1.10, but whatever, um, divided by 2.8, and that gives me a angular acceleration of 0 0.3928 radians per second negative two. I hope that's not jiggling too much because that clamp stand is not very good. Um, right, so that's our angular acceleration. All we need to do is find the torque. Torque is equal to the rotational inertia, which was 641. And we're going to times that by, what have we got? Three, uh, our angular acceleration, which is 3.928 uh, 
um, and that equals 251.8 newton meters. Yay! And that equals essentially, chuck it down here, um, what is it? 252, because we need to round up to 3SF. 252 newton meters. There we go. Right, the children get the merry-go-round uh, spinning once again at a constant angular speed. Um, then each child moves inwards towards the center of the merry-go-round, use physics principles and explain the effect this has on the energy, rotational energy of the system. Right, so I'm going to pause this and write out the full answer and I'm going to go through it like really finely. Um, just because, yeah. Right, so what I've seen... Ooh, damn it. Yeah, that's annoying. Right, so what I've said is... The rotational inertia, EK equals half I omega squared. Assuming no external torques, angular momentum will be conserved. Yeah, that's true if no external forks. In other words, the initial angular momentum should be equal to the final angular momentum, and I've just write it out in full. I omega, um, so like rotational inertia times angular velocity sh initial should equal rotational inertial final times angular velocity final. Um, and then as rotational inertia is MR squared, um, and as radius decreases, the rotational inertia decreases exponentially. Because if, if originally the radius was two, um, and we can just pretend the mass is one, two squared gives me four, which would be the rotational inertia was four. Um, now the rotational inertia drops down to one, so from the radius, I should say, radius drops from two to one. So initially, I would have been four. Now it's one times one squared, which is one times one times one, which is now one. So we went from four, rotational inertia of four down to a rotational inertia of one. So we can see there's an exponential relationship. Um, so rotational inertia decreases exponentially, thus angular velocity increases exponentially. So if, rotate, if this here decreases exponentially, so the, yeah, the final, I should say, the final angular uh, rotational inertia decreases exponentially, angular velocity must increase exponentially. It's kind of neat. Um, uh, Thus, angle uh, is right. So now I've written the formula. The rotational energy is equal to half um, I, the I final, so rotational inertia final times the angular velocity final squared. And I've just rearranged the angular momentum formula for the angular velocity. Um, and then I chuck, substitute this into this equation. So I get the rotational inertia equals half, it's crazy messy, but whatever, half times the rotational inertia final times angular momentum squared over the rotational inertia final. And you can see that the rotational inertia final squared, I should say, that and the squared cancel out. So I just get half angular momentum squared, L squared, divided by rotational inertia final. Um, and you can see that, remember that the angular momentum is constant. So all basically that happens is the rotational inertia decreases exponentially, um, which means the rotational inertia will uh, that rotational energy, I should say, should increase exponentially. Um, and that's what I said. We can see that if rotational inertia final decreases, which it does, then the rotational energy must increase, and that'll put exponentially as well. Um, there we go. And this, uh, this is like, a, what was it? It's a semi-common question. Um, and you can think about it practically. If you do this, you've got to pull, like, I don't know, what's he doing? He's, they're going towards the center of the... Um, of the merry-go-round. So from the children's perspective, they have a centrifugal force because they're rotating in a they're in a rotating reference frame and they're gaining what would be like a weird potential energy because they're going closer to the center. So they're having to overcome that centripetal force. Um, and it's just that they're going to, have to overcome that centrifugal force by getting closer and towards the center. Also you should never, never really use the word centrifugal, but it's, it's just because inside their rotating reference frame, because they're moving, um, they have to like, you know, if you did this yourself, when you're in a, in a merry-go-round, trying to get towards the center, it's hard work. That's where the energy comes from. 